Hello, in today's video, I'll be walking you through the basics of MS Word, how to create, edit, and save documents. So, let's get into it. So, depending on the option of Microsoft Word which you're using, I'm using the 2019 version, which comes with three options, the home option, the new option, and the open option. The home option gives you the option for the new blank document and also it shows you the recently opened files which you have been working on. The new option gives the option for the blank document and also online templates. Templates are basically built documents which you actually build upon. Your main job is to make some changes, twist and turns and boom your a document is done. For example, if I'm working with a CV, I can just come here and type CV. So make sure that your computer is connected to the internet otherwise it this feature is not going to function. Click on search. It opens for us the CVs or the resumes which are actually designed already. For example, I can just choose this option here and I say create. So it downloads it, then it opens after it's done. So when it's done here, my job is to just change these features here. First name, example, I can say first name, ATM College, surname. I can just say, so this is just a basic example of how we are going through. But from there, you can just change your experience, your address, your phone number, your contact details. And furthermore, then your job is done here. So that's how easy the templates make work easy for you. But let's go back to file. This time, I'm going to work on the option new now. I work on a blank document. So on the blank document, we have the ribbon, of course. The ribbon consists of tabs. So if I double click on any tab, it hides the ribbon. Double click again, it shows the ribbon. We have the home tab, insert, draw, design, layout, references, mailings, review, view, and also the help. If you double click on a tab, it hides your ribbon. Double click again, it shows your ribbon. This part on top here is called the quick access toolbar. It actually houses the shortcuts and makes work easy for you. We can move it below the ribbon or on top of the ribbon. We click here on this arrow. It gives us the drop down list. We say show below the ribbon. Click again here. We can say show above the ribbon. It comes and it appears on top of the ribbon. On each tab, inside each tab now, we have groups. For example, we have the home tab. It has the clipboard group. This is the font group, this is the paragraph group, styles group, and editing. Same thing on each of the other tabs. Let's start with the home one. For example, I type, hello, hello, I am a student studying at ATM College. So the blinking line here, the vertical blinking line, it's called an insertion point. We can move it to the beginning of your line or to the end. On your keyboard, you have the two shortcut buttons, which is home and end. When you press on home, it moves at the beginning of the line. When you press on end, it moves at the end of the line. To move the insertion point below the current line, you just press enter on your keyboard. It moves there. Now, for you to make any changes to your text, it has to be highlighted. Highlighting means you come at the beginning of the word or at the beginning of the text. You click hold on your mouse, then you drag until where you want. In the font group, we have the bold, which makes your text dark. You can click on it. It shows even uh, the shortcut of it is control plus B. So you just click on B, your text becomes darker. The other option, you click on I. It italizes your text, so it, it like bends your text. to use for underline. And Microsoft Word provides different methods and different versions of underline. So you can click on the arrow, it gives you the drop down list, choose any underline you want. Same thing one more time, choose any underline you want. The ABC here is called the strike through, it cancels your text. Now if you want to remove the changes which you have made here, you just click back on them and it removes it from your text. And if you, if you can see here from your text, it actually removes. I'll click at the end here, I'll press enter, I'll type number 102, I'll press enter again, I'll type 10 and TH. I'll press enter again, I'll type 3 and RD. So 
Microsoft Word, the current version, automatically puts the TH and converts and changes the RD into either a superscript or a subscript. For you who don't know what a, a superscript is, I'm going to highlight two on its own. This option here is the subscript. For example, the number now changes from 102 to 10 base 2. If you wanted to read 10 power 2, you click on the superscript, it goes up. Let's now change the color of our text here. Highlight your text here. You click here on the arrow here. You have the option for your text color. Choose a color you want. We can also increase the size. You click on the big A. Just go, continue clicking until the size that you want. Small A reduces the size. Or else you can just click here. You choose a size you want. For instance, if I want size 30, on these sizes here, there is no size 30. So you can just backspace from your keyboard. Type 30, then press enter. It act automatically pursues the size which you need. We have this feature also called the change case, such that if your text is in capital or is a small letter, you don't need to delete it to get the size which you want or the font case which you want. Example, I'll highlight student. I'll click here on change case. We can change it to uppercase. I'll click here again, still on change case. You can change it to lowercase. We still have other options like sentence case, capitalize. Each word means that if you highlight each of this text and you say capitalize each word, the first letter of each word is going to be capitalized. I'll just click here and choose sentence case. Sentence case makes the first letter of your sentence in capital, but the rest are in small letters. Next option which you have is the font style. So the styles are so many. For the people who are pursuing a course in graphic design, you know that we have fonts. So we have serif and sans serif. But for this video, for the sake of a Microsoft Word, I'm not going to get into that. We just click on the styles here. You can roll down, choose any style you want. They are automatically arranged alphabetically. So mine, we have added new fonts because you're also doing a graphic design. But for yours, might not have all these features. Choose the one you want. It automatically changes. Again, one more time, you can if you can even search, example, I want elephant, it automatically appears here. You just click on it and it shows you. That's how easy the font group is. The last feature which I've left is the clear formatting here and the other option here for highlight color. So we can highlight into the text which has the change. I can click on clear formatting. When you click on clear formatting, it goes back to the default size, the default font style and the default color of a Microsoft Office document same thing here highlight again we clear formatting it goes back to scratch let's go now to format painter for example i'm gonna press enter here i'll type keyboard i'll type mouse i'll highlight the word keyboard i'll increase the size i'll give it a font style any font style of my own choice i'll give it a color so what the format painter does is that the same same font or the same same formatting in one text can be copied down to the other ones. I just highlight the one which has the text which has the, the format which I want. Click on format painter, highlight on the way you want to apply it. It automatically gives that text the style which you want. One more time highlight, click on format painter, choose the one you want. It automatically gives it the same same style which you want. We have another feature which is called copy and paste. So what copy and paste does is, copy is used to duplicate data, while cut is used to move data from one location to another. But to make those changes apply, you must click on paste. If you copy without pasting, you will not be able to see what you have copied. So if you want to copy, and which means you want to duplicate your data, you have to paste it. One more time, I'll just highlight on, it, on the text ATM College, click on copy. So I can't see the duplicate which I'm trying to duplicate until I go to the place which I want it to be duplicated. I click on paste. I choose the first option, which keeps the source formatting. That's how easy it is. If I press enter one more time, the main point which I'm trying to make here is that copy is duplicating data. Cut is moving data from one location to another. But for you to apply both cut and copy, you need to paste them, which paste means applying the copy or cut item. For example, I'll highlight the word keyboard. I'll come here. I say copy. I'll come below ATM College. I come to paste. Let's turn out this other option which says keep text only. Notice that it pastes the word keyboard, but 
without the formatting which is on the top keyboard which is on the original source text which is keyboard which is color red and it has a font style so you click on it that's what the paste does so i'll walk you through the other paste options on the other videos as we continue in microsoft Word. now let's get into the paragraph group now first things first we have the alignment which is actually how your text is arranged your text is automatically arranged on the left side of your document so we can move it to the center by actually pressing on clicking on the center option we have the right option and we have the we have the justify option which means that if it, it makes your text start from the same line or from the same margin and ends from the same margin so let's return it back to our left side second option we have is the bullets so we can highlight all of our text we come to bullets we choose any bullet which you want or else you can just click on the option we say define new bullet it gives us symbols we need have so many options here for our bullets you just choose the one you want you can go up or you can go down choose the one you want say okay say okay again it automatically applies the other option you have is the numbering option we choose the numbering we want just choose any which you want next option we have is the multi-level list the multi-level is what it does so i'll just click here and say none for example let's say we have the option like computer application packages computer application inside computer application we have ms word we have uh, excel we have access and so on and so forth let's say in powerpoint we have something let's say in powerpoint we have an option like uh, slideshow we have the option for slides we have the option for audio so the multi-level list ap applies here now i just highlight the entire te all of my text i click on the multi-level list choose any which i want what it means that the first level is computer application inside application we have all of these other options so i'll highlight all of the other options i come here to the option I change the list level to be the level two. Remember, the slides and the audio and slideshow are under PowerPoint. So again, I'm gonna highlight them. I come to the option here. I say change list level, I choose the third option. So it gives you option to categorize your text or your headings into the levels which you specifically want. I'll highlight everything or else I can just undo, which returns back the changes to how the text was. This text has an issue up here, I'll just correct it. The other option you have here is, is the line spacing, the distance between our texts. So I'm, I'll highlight all the texts. I click on the arrow here. We have so many options. Choose the one which you want. That's easy peasy. Again, click again. Choose the one which you want. We have another option here, which is called the shading. The difference between the highlight color and the shading is that when you highlight your text and you come to highlight color, choose a color which you want. It highlights your text only. But on the other hand, when you highlight your text when you highlight your text but you click here one minute so i'll just escape the option when you highlight your text but you click here on shading it sheds the entire line that's the huge difference between shading and highlight color the highlight color highlights the text only which you have highlighted but the shading sheds the entire line again you can just click there you say no color same thing with the borders which are actually the lines around your text so we can highlight your text again we just click on borders you can give it a bottom border a top border a left border so the difference between the border and the underline is that when you highlight your text come to the underline the underline gives only the text which you have highlighted at the underline but if you want a line which stretches through your entire text or to your entire line you choose now the border that's how easy it is so we can click again we add one more we can click again we add on the size that you want until it forms a whole like box so we can click again we say no borders the shortcut is you just press on all borders than to click on each one by one you say no borders the other option you have is here now this is called arranging or sorting it's the same same thing we can highlight your, your text here we give them numbering so when i come to sorting here i have the options here i can either sort by text i sort by number or i sort by date for example we just sort by number i click here i want to sort by paragraphs now the first paragraph you have here so it can either be ascending or descending so descending is here i can say okay it automatically sorts it 
Same thing, you can just come here. I see now sort in ascending, say OK. It automatically sorts it in an ascending order. That's it now from the text A, B, C, D here. That's how you can see it now. So that's how easy it is now. Again, I can just click here. I say none. That's how the paragraph group works. The other option you have here is the editing, which comes with the option to find, replace, and select. The find and replace feature is crucial when you're working with a large amount of document. Right now, we just have 10 words. It's actually on the status bar. We just have 10 words, one page only, which is actually very easy. So what I can do, example, we want to find and replace the word Excel, but we can't find it. I can click here on the arrow next to find. We have the find, advanced find, and go to. Let's work with the advanced find. It gives us the two options, both to find and to replace. So let me say I want to find. So I can just click on replace, which gives me both options. I want to find Excel. Assuming I don't see the word Excel, I'll replace it with graphic design. The moment I click on find next, it highlights the word which you are finding. Assuming that your document has 16 words, which are Excel. If I say replace, it replaces only the one word which is highlighted. If I say replace all, it replaces all the words which are called Excel to graphic design. I'll just say replace this time. I say OK. I say close. So it has found the text word and it has replaced it with the text graphic design. Select also comes with options. You can select objects, example shapes, select all text with similar formula uh, formatting. So if you have highlighted your text and it has a specific font, this will select it. Selection pen opens a whole pen here. So let's say we select all and you can just backspace. It removes your work once. That's how it works. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe and share. We'll see you on the next video.